Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Hope all is well to you today. Hope all is well. Now we're in today three of how to build a profitable business with your idea. So I hope that day one and two gave you some insight and gave you some clarity and gave you some motivation to take action on your business ideas and your business goals. So yesterday was a little short because I just came on here and gave you some tips, but I think the information I gave you should have been very helpful and should have been very powerful because the main ingredient in that message was how to get um give you some strategies on how to just do, you know, just to do what needs to be done in order for you to be able to grow that list and grow your client base. That's the main part because the clients and the customers are the ones that help our business grow along with, you know, our customer service skills and experience and all those good things that come come along with helping you to be successful in business, right? All righty. Now today we're going to go ahead and get started, get to talking. If you have a comment, leave a comment. But like I said, uh, these videos that I'm doing will be we're going to do a few of them. Probably I'm thinking about doing at least seven days of it. It may be a little long. It all depends on how much of the content that I want to share with you on about how to grow a profitable, profitable business, um, how long it'll take. And I think um, seven days may be good of the information that I want to share with you. So I hope that you get something out of it. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing, just to recap a little bit about what we talked about yesterday, we talked about, you know, I gave the illustration or the demonstration or, you know, I gave the scenario of Lowe's and Home Depot and then, you know, how those two are competitors with each other, whatever, how if Lowe's was already established, how Home Depot would, what they would do. And I wanted you to take that idea and put it into your own Put it yourself into your own business business model and use some of the strategies that possibly could have came up with that. And I'm not saying that that's how the approach is that that's not the well, I'm not saying that's the approach he took or that, you know, the owners, the company of Home Depot took to get to where they are today. But here again, that's just some strategies that I feel like a lot of businesses can use. All righty. Now. Next, we're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about how to understand. And this is kind of like basically in a, just a continuation from yesterday. How if a business have, um, you know, you're still looking at your competitors. You're looking at their strategies in a sense that you're looking at how do they run ads or how do they market to their buying base in ways that you can look and see exactly what their ad is saying and not saying, and then, you know, not copying what they're saying, but you always need to strategically, strategically know what's going on with your competitors. So that is one way to do, um, to do, you know, to, and for is how to monitor your competitors for your business. All right. The next one is going to be, we'll talk about a little bit about this one is social media, social media, you know, how the, it's, it's really changed so much over the years since I first started really going live and doing things in business on social media. Social media is good for business and a lot of businesses are here with their businesses, uh, you know, growing their businesses and with their business, you know, strategy and with their business campaign. And there's been a lot of millionaires built really within the last, what, 10 years off of this, these platforms to grow their business. So don't, you know, learn how, where we will, if you're in the academy or if you're going to be in one of the the courses that I teach, I go and give you specific strategies on all of these, how they work. So here today, I'm telling you what to do. I'm not telling you how to do it. So we're learning what you need to be doing. Okay. So just keep that in mind. 
for their step-by-step-by-step by step by step strategies to make all of this that we're talking about today happen. And social media is no, ex, you know, no is not exempt from that. And then let me continue on with social media because you know when you're using your social media, you have algorithms. You there's a strategy to allow you some yes a, a lot of times you can build your business by you know you hear people say well i i can I'm tell you how i built my business without running ads yeah it, it's possible too but it's a lot of work so our one question would be are you willing to do the work number t- number two would be you know how is your budget going to be are you going to reach the people and are you going to be strategic in doing that okay just like i think i mentioned on day one um how you have to be keyed in on your target audience not everybody out here that you feel like will will just buy something from you no you got to be in the face of those that really want what you have because if they don't want what you have they're going to ignore you and you're going to be wasting money especially if you're putting money on ads and you know because of how these platforms work and how it works when you're spending ad dollars on marketing your business, you can easily burn up, burn up. <laughs> you can easily burn out. You, you burn up your money and burn out too at the same time. Okay. Now the next thing we want to talk about is finding exactly what someone is looking for in a sense where you just straight out just ask them. And what I mean by that is by surveying them. There are ways and strategies that you can survey someone. And my advice to you is to do that. Like I said, I know who my target audience is. And every now and then I would email, well, I would survey my email list and find out what they need or what are they looking for. Because think about it. If they if you give them what they want, then they're going to buy from you. You give them what you think they should have. They may or may not purchase the purchase a product from you. That may may happen, Captain, and it may not. So you want to make sure of that. You want to be clear on that one. Okay. Now. Next thing is finding other other ways or other places where um, people hang out and just get in and snoop doggy dog, <laughs> just snoop and see what's going on and um, write, you know, have you a pad and a sheet of paper and, and just figure out, okay, what's going on in these, you know, whether it's blogs or forums, what's, what's going on in these communities that you are part in and um and there and your potential client is there as well just see what are they looking for and then you can go and build it for them or go and make it a service for them and um maybe they'll buy from you okay all righty now the next thing is I apologize next thing is going to be you know, mostly finding finding out, like, let's say, how to put it? Okay, let's say you're looking for a team. You're looking for a team for your business. You would want to, because you got a, you know, you have something that you feel like can make you some money, but you know, you're a one man show, a one woman show, and you're going to need a little help. Well, you can go and get help from, you know, these, some of these freelance sites. And what you have to do is there's a ways to approach them, you know, just let, let them know what you need and let them know the things that you require of them and be very specific. So where you can get a pool of qualified people to help you get there. So this is another way that you can build how you can build a profitable business. You have to get a team with you. Now you can, these will be contractors. These won't be people that you will be paying um, as employees. Now you need to know, also know the difference in the two as well. Okay. All righty. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, and we'll probably wrap it up on, we're going to talk about a few more of these, and it's going to be, you know, detailing out how you're going to communicate 
you know, if you're not strong with this, like writing out your content or writing out information that, you know, building a sales page or something like that, find somebody that can do it for you. Hire them, like I said, from one of these freelance places I spoke of, um, Upwork and Fiverr. Those are two. And then they have a few more, but those are the more popular ones. Those are the two that I use have much I've had I've had much success with them at all times. Haven't had any bad, you know, some people may, but I didn't, you know, I didn't have any bad experiences with them. And um, back to what I was saying about having communicating your message for your sales, you know, strategy or whatever you're going to do, making sure that you are using, you know, the language that they need, whether it's being using specific words that grab attention, you know, those things that we were taught in English when we were in school and making sure that you are, I would say, creating a, a letter, a sales letter at some sort or at some point, you know, conveying that to them, conveying that what's the benefits of your services to them. You got to communicate all of this to them. And once you do, and just like I tell you guys, I, I always, you know, I don't know whether any of you ever seen it. I always talk about the importance of a business plan and the value you would get out of it and the things that you can get from it. I'm not just saying that just to say, oh, I just want to hear myself talk on social media. I'm not doing that because, <laughs> because there is a message into everything I'm saying and there's a strategy involved in it. And this is the way you help you build rapport with people and you help your business grow at the same time. Okay. And then also making sure that you are, like I said, your sales, your sales strategy, but making sure that you're speaking in a language that's going to grab the attention of others. I may have said that, but one last thing I want to help you and I want you to understand is, you know, having your information detailed out to and having it structured in a way that when people come to do business with your business, you know, you wouldn't have everything together and you wouldn't have left anything out. So if there is something that they come and purchase from you, you ought to also, you can maybe upsell them is what they call it. Maybe you can introduce something else to them that can enhance what you've already given them. So we, like if you sold them something and then you know that they may need this other portion, may not today, but later, yeah, you ought to definitely know of your strategy. You may not even say nothing to them then, but even make sure that you have the opportunity to speak with them later, virtually, you know, whether it be a text message or email. And then you ought to make sure if you're not the person that's interacting with them for its customer service, you need to make sure that, that you explain that to your staff or whoever you have working with you, that they need to get one or the other, the email address or the phone number or either both. And also make sure, you, you know, you get a, a name, just put them on your, just tell them, you know, put them on your mailing list or something like that. So, and get their, you know, to get their permission. So anyway, that's going to be all for today. Those are the things that I wanted to speak with with you about on day three. We will continue on and I'll see you tomorrow. And also just to remember this, you know, your vision is is it's a it's a God's vision. So if you have you know doubts about things that you should or shouldn't be doing once you get clear and once you plan it out, it is going to all dissipate. It's going to go away that self-doubt, that, you know, paralysis analysis, <laughs> paralysis analysis, that fear, that procrastination, everything, all of that is going to disappear. And simply because you will be prepared to go to the next level in your life. Bye. Yes. Yeah, so once you do that, you feel secure about yourself. All right. You really will. Preparation it relieves all anxiety. I believe that preparation, being prepared, 
being prepared, just think about it. Being prepared for anything can cause you to be less afraid, less anxious, and less concerned about the outcome. You know, whether it's good or bad. That's if you're prepared. That's with anything. Remember that, okay? All right. I know that to be true. I really do. All jokes aside. Okay. Thank you so much. And we'll see you tomorrow in uh, what? Day four. All righty. Have a good night. Bye-bye.